Hello and welcome to West Yorkshire Police Facebook Live. Today is Safer Internet Day. I'm PC Michael Batty. I'm a Safer Schools Officer in the Wakefield District. I've been an officer with West Yorkshire Police for just under 15 years now. I've been in my current role for just uh, under two years and prior to that I spent 13 years working in the Leeds District working on neighbourhoods and as a patrol officer. Hello, I am Sergeant Mark Beat and I am the Partnership Sergeant at Wakefield. I've been an officer for 26 years and other roles that I've performed are patrol, neighbourhood policing, intelligence and roads policing. Hello everyone, I'm PC Dave Vollens. Uh, I've been a police officer for almost 17 years now um, and for the last four years, like Michael, I've been working in schools across the Wakefield district. Uh, prior to that, I was part of a neighbourhood policing team uh, in Wakefield and, and Osset. Hello everyone, my name is Ismail Lohair. I'm a crime prevention officer based in Wakefield. Um, I work on a number of crime types including um, cybercrime where I concentrate on the online safeguarding element and I've been working uh, for West Yorkshire Police now for over three and a half years. So Safer Internet Day 2021 celebrates the amazing range of information and opportunities online and its potential to inform, connect and inspire us, whilst also looking at how young people can separate fact from fiction. We're going to spend the next 30 minutes sharing advice on how you as a parent and carer uh, can keep young people safe online. We'll also give you the opportunity at the end of the presentation to ask any questions that you might have. Safer Internet Day 2021 is a fantastic opportunity to have a conversation with your child around this year's theme. It's an internet we trust to explore rel reliability in the online world. Communication is the key to identifying online misinformation. Talk together and begin the conversation with your child on a positive note with your ch child by asking them, what do you like most about the internet and how does the internet make things better for you? Yeah, and it's a good time as well to talk often to your child and how they use the technology and where they go for the information online. Discuss who they follow, what types of adverts they see and what stories they find surprising or suspicious. Have that conversation. We also have our Your Child campaign that some of you may have already seen. Uh, it's something that we collaborated with the uh, NSPCC on. It was around, uh, I think, 18 months ago, and it links perfectly uh, with the theme of this year's uh, Safe Internet Day message. The campaign is uh, sort of very simple in its message. It's around including parents and carers to have a five minute chat with your child about keeping safe online. So this could be something uh, like a quick discussion on the games they're playing, on uh, if they're making new friends on social media, if they're talking to anyone new, uh, it could be a chat about any other apps that they've downloaded or something that they read online about that they're not sort of, that's sort of the curious about in terms of its fact is it fiction. So that campaign was around just having that conversation and creating that conversation and then sort of going from there. And so, sorry, very quickly in regards to the apps that a child may download, there are always new apps flying about, you know, being launched. Some may become popular for a while until the next one comes along. And I know for parents, it can be quite difficult to keep on top of the new releases. But if you can remember one thing is that most apps will have the same format uh, in that they'll have a chat element. So the advice you can give to your child will be around the sort of chat elements of the app. So that's one thing to keep in mind because I know there's loads of apps out there and it's so hard for parents and carers to keep on top of you know what's going on. So just remember the chat element of, of, of an app. Okay, and also remember it's important to show your child uh, how you question and evaluate online content. Seeing their parent actively questioning and evaluating online content teaches young people uh, the importance of doing some, uh, sorry, doing the same. Um, set the example. Uh, young people will always uh, follow um, the, the parents and they'll see the examples we set. So it's important that, that we uh, are leaders in that and that we set those examples to young people. You can also uh, explain to your child that when reading articles or any posts, any short shared posts, that they are not always uh, factual, that they are often opinions. So it's sometimes quite good to differentiate between the two. So look at who's sending those posts, if it's across uh, Facebook or, so, or Twitter or any social media sort of um, platform. What else have they been sending? What is their profile like? What's their bio like? 
Uh, so there's that kind of stuff there to look at in terms of what will help your child differentiate between fixed and, uh, fact and um, opinion. If it's an article, who is the article written by? Is it a fact piece? Is it an opinion piece? Who's the writer? Who's the author? Uh, of the article piece, you know, what, what's their previous sort of um, articles been published on. So these are the kind of thought processes that our children need to be need to learn and put into practice. So so that way they can be sort of better informed in terms of what is written and how they can go about creating their own opinions as to what they have read. It's just about making sure they've looked at both sides of the argument before they sort of make their judgment. Just following obviously from what Ismail just said, obviously in relation to fact checking. Uh, fact checking. Obviously, uh, before you obviously share it, bear with me two seconds here. So, yeah, fact check and reflect before sharing content or posting pictures. If the information comes from a parent, some children may believe it without questioning it. So, it's really important, you as parents, that if you're telling your children information, that you're also giving them the right information. All right? Just ask your child how uh, misleading information they see online makes them feel. Regularly check in with your child and ask them how they feel about what they see online. Reassure your child that you are there to talk to them about things which upset them and support them with how they feel. You could always look to seek help and support yourself by asking other parents how they address misleading online content. Okay, and you can find more information by vis visiting Child, Child Net, Child's Net Need Help and a colleague of mine will post a link to that on this chat. Yes, yeah, so as we said, one of the most important things you can do is to have that conversation with your child frequently. But there are other measures that you can take to ensure your child's online activity is safe. For example, many of you may have heard of uh, an organisation called Internet Matters. So in a nutshell, uh, they're, sort of, they're a not-for-profit organisation that work collaboratively with uh, industry, government and schools to reach, the U to reach our UK families in how to be safe online so they've got tools tips guides on how you can do that um i know we so we keep mentioning about um having a conversation with your child and that's where internet matters uh, steps in they've got ready-made guides on how to sort of approach the conversation uh, what tips to use how you can sort of um, use check checklist facts and stats in terms of how we can uh, approach the conversation so these sort of guides are age appropriate so I think they've got guides for not to four years old and then four to six and then six to ten and ten to fourteen and fourteen plus onwards. Um, so it's quite important. That you sort of, I think my colleague might share the link uh, on the chat. It's quite important to look through, um, you know, what they have to say in terms of how you can approach the conversation to the best, to the best way you can. Because I know it's quite difficult sometimes. Obviously, if you don't know, if you're not quite cyber aware or online aware of, of what your child's going on or what they might be visiting, you know, it's quite good to read this and how you can approach the best way in terms of starting a conversation. Uh, on top of that, uh, Internet Matters also offers sort of guides on monitoring apps. Um, monitoring apps, I mean, in the first instance, having a conversation with a child is enough in terms of building uh, trust and setting boundaries. But sometimes they might think that uh, a monitoring app may be quite useful. It might be something that's an extra layer of security that you might want to add onto your child's uh, online activity. But before you sort of go into looking at uh, the different types of child monitoring apps out there, you might want to sort of talk to the child in terms of, yes, we might be putting a child monitoring app on your device instead of just doing it you know, behind their backs, if that makes sense, because that, you might sort of lose trust. Uh, on them, so always let them know that yeah, you might be sort of putting a, a monitoring app on your device just so we know you're safe and and you know if there's something you can talk to us about it. Um, so on their sort of they've got a link uh, on their website where they go through the different types of um, monitoring apps you can download. Some you have to pay for, and um, you know it goes through each sort of. Um, registered app that you can go the benefits of it the negatives of it and all that kind of stuff so it's quite good to make you know informed decision if you go down that route also for those um apple users um this we've got the um time screen sort of software which is free of charge that you can look at look into as well um so again yeah as i say look into that link um it will be quite helpful uh, if you're sort of thinking of um using a monitoring app also on the uh, same website, uh, they've also got guidance on how you can make your broadband and mobile networks more secure in terms of filtering or limiting any inappropriate content that your child may access. 
So the Internet Matters, they've got a link on their website that's got step-by-step -step guides on uh, leading broadband providers for BT, Sky, Talk, Talk, Virgin, etc. in terms of how you can set up uh, those filters and set up those settings to make sure your broadband and your sort of mobile networks are, you know, uh, got the correct settings for your child. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, there's also something called the Zip It app, Z-I-P It app, and it's a free app uh, that's supported by Childline and the uh, NSPCC. So in a nutshell, what that app does is it basically guides young people in situations where they're asked for news. So, um, for example, a child may be talking to someone that they might know uh, from school or from, from whatever, and uh, through conversation they might ask for in, indecent images of you know of, of nudes or of sexting and um, sometimes the child might not know how to react or how to respond so that zip it app actually guides that young person in terms of right this is what you can respond this is what you can suggest uh, because sometimes you know you get a lot of instances where um, you know a lot of young people might push uh, some send images uh, because oh everyone's doing it in school or you're, you're something you're not doing it you know you're boring all that kind of stuff so that app sort of deals with this with this situation and as I say it's on the zip it uh, and it's on the sorry the Childline um, website and it's called zip it so it's worth telling your children about this app and worth yourself looking into it in terms of how it works so quite a useful sort of app uh, for your child to sort of download and know about. There's also something called uh, an organization called the uh, Internet Watch uh, Foundation, the IWF. And what they do is they help to eliminate child sexual, child sexual abuse imagery online by removing the content. So on their website, there's a report criminal content tab. So if you click on that, you can report. Uh, any child sexual abuse image or video that you've seen and they will try their best to remove that. I mean, we can't guarantee they're going to remove it completely because as you may not, or may or may not know, um, whenever something's posted online, it's not sometimes it's there forever because, you know, you don't take into account someone might screenshot it. Um, so what that app does, uh, what that uh, Internet Watch uh, Foundation does is sort of removes that from the main platforms. But uh, as I say, if you come across anything, yeah, it's quite good to sort of report that um, content um, and it's quite handy to look into as well. Yeah, thank you, Ismail. Right, so what we're going to do now is we're, we're going to move on to some questions from uh, Facebook. Just uh, of note, if you can't think of any questions now, we have actually got a Twitter page uh, which you can follow us and you can ask us questions you know, later on today or any time during the week. You can follow us at WYP underscore WSS. Okay, so the first question we've got from Claire, it's, uh, I find it really hard to keep track with uh, my 13 year old as there are so many different social media platforms. So yeah, yeah, there is a lot, you know, and there's new ones coming out monthly. There is a really good website actually, it's called NetAware. Uh, NetAware, it's net-aware.org.uk and it's a guide to social networks, apps and games and literally it'll tell you about every app, what they do, you know, if it's a gaming app, if it's a messaging app and it's really good uh, just so you can keep on top of what your child's visiting. Yeah, can I can I come in on that as well? Yeah, yeah, as a parent, it is very difficult to keep on top of everything. Um, I'll give you an example. Um, I thought I'd turn all the chat uh, chat talking off uh, a games console, um, but I came in and found my son. There was actually people chatting to him through the controller. So, you know, there's so much out there. You need to do your own research on it. Um, but there is the links to help you, um, and it's getting to know it because as soon as one, one app goes, another app comes in. And uh, our young young children are always coming into late app. But what, one one good thing to know is um, we get a lot of pressure from our kids to say, listen, can I download this? Can I download that? And it might just be worth going onto official app site. And sometimes they have a ratings on there. They should have a rating on there about what age you know they can download the app. And obviously, if they sign up as well to the app, there's also age ratings on there. So that that's conversations you need to have, with, you know, with us children really. But I, I, do, I do say it's very difficult when there's so much out there to go. But then, you know, with signposts and links that we, we're sharing, that should help help you, you know, make those choices. Yeah, and as I mentioned in the talk, um, yeah, there's loads of apps, you know, there's new ones being released every day. But as I say, most of them, if not all, actually, will have the same format in that it has a 
in chat element to it. So if you think about that, if you put that into your forefront in terms of, in terms of your thinking, it's something that you can concentrate your advice on in terms of, yes, there are people out there who sort of download the same app, they might register on it, and they'll use that in chat element to talk to you or sort of, you know, um, if they've got all your motives and all that kind of stuff. So that's something to think about in terms of all apps will have the same format. Yeah, thank you. So Hannah's asked, is Roblox safe? I have got limited knowledge on Roblox. I know it is a gaming app. Is there anybody else in the chat who knows more about Roblox? No, not particularly. But I mean, if you sort of send um, a message on the Twitter handle, we can sort of look into that and then give you some more information on that. Because I know there's um, um, sort of cyber Spox PCSOs in district who sort of do give inputs on that. So yeah, we can sort of let you know in terms of if there's any more information you want in on that too. As I say, my limited knowledge of Roblox, it is a gaming app and as far as I'm aware that obviously your child can play online against other users around the world. Uh, I've obviously got experience that from my nephew who's used it previously. I think you've just got to, you know, just follow basic, you know, advice. Obviously, if people are messaging by that platform, well, if they don't know, they shouldn't be messaging back. If it's just a case of the playing against them online, you know, and it's just a get, it's just, a, you know, it's a game they're playing online. But when it goes further than that, and you know, people are messaging and asking them questions, that's when you need to obviously, as, as a parent, you know, you know that access to if you don't think you can trust what they're doing on the app. Also, as well with those uh, games. A lot of games, if you go into settings, there's actually privacy settings in there that you can change. You can turn chat off. Um, there's friend requests that you can get, but you can only get them from friends of friends um, or, you know, friends that, that you know. So the, the safety measures in there, it's just it, sometimes it's, as a parent, it's difficult to find them. And uh, I know my son's a very sa savvy with computer um, and the games console. So it's just getting there, looking at those settings and uh, looking at some, you know, Good professional online advice from other people as well about the, what, what, how to keep you know your child safe online. Yeah. The next question is from Rachel. Uh, she says, "I'm concerned about all the scam emails that are about at the moment. Is there a central place to report for them to thanks?" Yeah, there is. So uh, through the National Cyber Security Centre, which is sort of a uh, government Home Office response uh, to cyber safety. There is something called the Suspicious Email Reporting Service, SERS, SERS. So, as I said, this is a service from the NCSC. Uh, so, if you received an email or phishing email, which you're not quite sure about, it might be quite fraudulent, you're just not sure about. So, you can report it to uh, the SERS email address, which is report at phishing.gov.uk. So I'll, make, I'll repeat that again, report at phishing.gov.uk. So what that does is, if you get like a fraudulent email, a phishing email, or an email you're just not sure about, because there's some emails, which you can, sometimes it's really hard to decide if it's real or fake. So if you just forward that on to that email address, and then it's looked at it from a national response. So if more people sort of forward the same email, it's more, the more it gets looked at and the more sort of nationally uh, there's a response to it. So they might sort of block uh, the email handle and, and sort of, you know, if we, sort of, we sort of collect that data and then it gets passed on to different forces. So as I say, yeah, it's a reporting service and it's through that uh, email address. And as I say, it's report at phishing.gov.uk. Yeah, thank you for that, uh, Smell. We've also been asked a question by Marcia. It uh, says, what about bullying online? Uh, as a school officer, it's obviously something we deal with on a weekly basis. I'm not obviously sure the context of the question, what you want it from us, whether it's how you want it, how you deal with it. But what I would advise, obviously, if there is bullying going on, if it's from you know other people at school, is first of all, you know, report the incidents to the school. Uh, then from that, if they have got social media platforms that they are speaking to on, just block them completely. You know, get get your child to block them on that. So. You know, they can't be contacted. Is the anything else anybody wants to add to that? Yeah, I think you can also report uh, any sort of um, you know online bullying content to that uh, so that service provider. So, for example, if it's happening on on Snapchat or Twitter or Facebook, you know, you could report it through there as well. So, you know, that's something to think about. We've also got um, 
on our website, on Wrestling Oxford Blues website, we've got um, guides on social media safety. So we've got um, sort of uh, guides on Instagram, uh, Facebook, Snapchat, uh, Twitter, and LinkedIn as well, in terms of how you can make your uh, profile more private. So if you go on our Wrestling Oxford Blues website and slash cyber, it'll, it'll link you in there from there. Right, Elizabeth has asked, is kids YouTube safe? I think obviously referring back to the website before uh, NetAware, uh, it will tell you more information about YouTube. But I know personally YouTube it is highly moderated. Any content that should be on there should get removed quite quickly. Uh, as I say, that's the whole idea of YouTube Kids. You know, it's so kids can view so they're not access accessing videos you may not feel suitable for them. Right, so at the moment, as I say, uh, I've got no further question at the moment. However, I just want to talk about something else that was not covered previously and is actually on our Twitter feed. It's, it's in relation to uh, an acronym called SMART. And this is something that obviously you can talk to your child about. And the way, it's, way I'm going to say it is obviously aimed as if you are speaking to a child, but it is, it is a really good way just to get your child to you know, think about what they're doing online. So I'll just go through what SMART actually stands for. So S is for safe. Obviously, remember to keep all your personal information safe when you're posting, chatting, or playing games online. M is for meeting. So meeting up with somebody you've met online can be dangerous, as this person is still a, day, a stranger. Uh, a is for accepting. Think carefully before accepting friend requests online. Only accept friend requests from people that you know. And R is for reliable. You cannot trust everything you see online. There's a lot of misinformation. To find reliable information. Compare at least three different websites, look at books and discuss what you have found with an adult. If something if something or somebody makes you feel upset, worried or confused or uncomfortable online, you tell an adult. Obviously that's what T stands for. And we've actually West Shorts Please have produced two videos in relation to Smart, which you can watch with your children. There's one on our Twitter feed that's live now, uh, which I've just said before, it's WIP underscore WSS. And if you go onto the West Yorkshire Please face page or twi uh, Twitter feed, there's also a, a longer video on this SMART, SMART acronym, which is really good. It's just a really good way of obviously educating your child, you know, on what they should be doing online, and it just gives them something to think about. Uh, my colleague uh, Isma also wanted just to briefly speak to you about the National Cyber Security Centre. Yes, yeah, so as I mentioned, the government response to cyber safety uh, and online safety is National Cyber Security Centre, the NCSC, and they've got a few sort of um, main points that you know every person should know about. So one of them is, uh, and you may already know this as well, to be fair, because it's quite uh, you know relevant in terms of how we operate uh, from a cyber perspective. So one of them is around passwords. Uh, so the government advice is to use three random words to create a strong password. So it could be any random word in terms of carpet, slippers, mobile phone. So then three random words make up your one password. It's, you can even go one step further in terms of adding a symbol or a capital letter in that as well. And you can have that strong three random word password for all your accounts except for your email address. It's quite imperative that you use a strong separate password for your email address because um, that is something cyber criminals can use uh, to access many of your other important accounts on. So in a nutshell, have a strong password, this is from three random words for your accounts, but have a separate one of the same format for your email, um, which is quite imperative to know. Uh, there's also, um, what, what else they sort of advise on is sort of, uh, making sure you install the latest software and app updates on your device and mobile phone. So, in a nutshell, cyber criminals use weaknesses in softwares and apps to attack your device and steal your identity for sort of identity theft purposes. So, software and app updates are designed to fix these weaknesses and installing them as soon as possible will keep your device secure. So, when you get sort of reminders on your phone or on your laptop, yeah, it can be quite annoying, but it's quite imperative that you sort of you know update it as soon as you can, because as I say, it's, it sort of secures the patch on your laptop or mobile device, which sort of restricts um, any movement a criminal can have on your device. 
Uh, there's also something called two-factor authentication or 2FA known as short. So this provides an extra layer of security on your account. So when you're setting up a 2FA uh, authentication, the service will ask you to provide a second factor, which is something that you and only you can access. So this could be a code that's sent to you by text message. So for example, when you log into your, if you do online banking, when you log into on, on, on your online banking, um, after, it's, after you put your password in, it might ask you for, uh, it might send you a message on your phone with a code that you input. And again, that code is something that only you can get. So that's what, that's what two-factor authentication is. And it's quite something to consider in terms of setting that up for your uh, email account as well. Um, there's all, it's also quite important to back up your data. So safeguarding your most important data, such as yours, your phone, your, your photos, sorry, your key documents, by backing them up to an external hard drive or on a cloud-based storage, sort of uh, protects you from uh, an attack where, for example, your, your sort of, uh, laptop's hacked or you've got a virus. So if you lose some, them, some them sort of documents on your laptop, a backup will sort of make sure you've you've got that. Uh, and I say it could be quite simple as uh, you know saving them on the, in your memory stick, as I mentioned, or on cloud-based system. Or you can go old-fashioned; you can print them out. Um, as I say, obviously uh, going back to basics, you know, it can't be compromised by technology. So yeah, so those are sort of uh, sort of key messages from the government that you know we should all sort of take heed and. Um, sort of uh, use uh, to make sure that we're safe uh, online. All right, thank you, Ismail. Right, so that's going to be the end of today's Facebook Live. Okay, so thanks to you all for joining us today. If there's anything else any of my colleagues want to add to that, is there anything else anybody wants to add? No, just 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 to uh, keep keep an eye keep an eye on what what we're all doing online to stay safe. And that's all it's about protecting a, you know vulnerable, staying safe, and they're looking after one another. Oh, I guess just come in, Michael. As well. and, and also try, try and get involved in in what it might sound daunting in in what the kids are playing online as well in games. Um, it's something I've got three young children myself. It's something that I've done recently um, when they start talking about new games. And the best way I learn is by by doing. So yes, you can read all about it, but I, but I like to to actually get on the game as well and and, and give it a go and, and see what it is. Um, I mean, you, we we can always uh, download download and then get rid of those apps as as, as they please. But it's it's probably the better way as well to, to make sure that they are safe um, because you are experiencing what they're experiencing. And, and like I say, have that chat with your kids, find out what, what, what they're up to and, and what they're getting on. Um, and the sort of young we do that, it becomes normal to them then as well, that we're, we're showing that interest. Um, so yeah, so, so don't be, be frightened by technology and, and have a go as well. Yeah, as I previously said, as I say, I know some people may join this Facebook Live and obviously watch it after the event. If there is anything you do want to ask us, you know, you can follow me on Twitter at WIP underscore WSS and same to anybody who's now viewing. If there's something that you didn't obviously think about asking, you know, don't hesitate to get in contact, okay? Yeah. 